right, so here's a bit of a look at the Speak Me app which is specifically designed for handwriting to text to speech. It's not like a whiteboard where you just are drawing. It's specifically designed for being able to handwrite and have that converted automatically to text to speech. Um, and this is an older app. Let me find where that is. It hasn't been updated in five years, which is a long time. Normally, I wouldn't suggest buying an older app like that. But for $7.99, it intrigued me enough. I went ahead and bought it, and it's working fine. It's on my iPad and iPhone, both on iOS 18.2 point whatever. I can't remember. 18.2 point something. It's not the most, most recent iOS, but the one right before that. So it hasn't shown any glitches, so I feel fine recommending it. So let's open it up. And here's what I love. Large, full screen message window that you can write on the whole screen, basically, um, and have that converted. So I'm going to write with my... It's a very inexpensive version similar to an Apple Pencil, but I got it on Amazon um, for like $19.99. So I love this thing. So I kind of messed up on that one. Let's clear that out. Or actually watch this. Boop. So yeah, sometimes with cursive, if it's really illegible, it may not get it. Um, but it's done most of what I've written. It has been able to convert. And then I tap speak. Angela. And it does that. I like this app. And if I don't want that to clear out, that is something I can adjust here. Um, clear after reading. Let's toggle that off. Done. So you see, it was telling me as I was writing, I got some visual feedback. If that wasn't quite what I meant, I can edit. Isn't that cool? And then I can choose to speak it. Or what I like here is that it doesn't automatically speak. If I just wanted to show it to someone, I could do that as well. I have an undo button and I have a clear button. Okay, under the hood, um, folks are wanting to know more about the options here. All right, so background color, you have several, a palette of several um, options. And it shows favorites and recents. I'm not quite sure the purpose of those. I would just probably select what I wanted. Um, and then the pen color, so what I'm drawing with. Those are the options. Line width, I'm keeping pretty thin. Whenever I got it really thick, it was harder for me just visually to see what I was drawing. It was too thick. Voice speed and pitch. Languages, so your uh, speech language, the voice. And this app officially supports Japanese and USA English, but on voices, there are a lot more versions of English than just USA. And these may vary depending on what you have set under iOS, accessibility, spoken content, um, you'll see I have extra ones here, like there's my The Voice Keeper voice that's personalized to me. Um, I've purchased a few voices where it says Screen Reader. Those are Seraproc Seraplay voices that I have purchased and can use as an iOS voice. But you have lots of USA voices. There's English India, English UK... Uh, English Australia, and there probably would be even more depending on what you have set over in iOS accessibility spoken content. 
All right. Buzzer, that's to gain attention. I haven't really explored these, but there are lots of options here. I will note that under the tip at the bottom where it talks about being able to import your own file in a folder in iTunes, I'm not sure if that's even a thing anymore. I don't, I'm not sure that's would be an option. I don't even have iTunes installed on anything. Um, anyway, so I don't know if that part's still available, but there's plenty of other options. Um, okay. You can use a key keyboard. There's a spot for favorites. If you wanted to have favorites, like phrases or something, you can have those on the top, the left, the right. I'm going to put mine on the right. Uh, there's a dictionary, which just it's gives you a way to look up something. You'd have to read it to yourself. It doesn't have text-to-speech on that, so I'm not going to demo that. Uh, you can have a history button, and then there's also a log here in the settings that keeps track of what um, has been spoken. And you can clear that. Uh, language switcher would be if you wanted to use it in, in both the Japanese and the English. Show converted text is where you were seeing where it's figuring out what I'm writing in real time based on what it's already perceived as the characters before and after it. Um, Guide message, I'll toggle that on. That just tells you what the parts of the screen are. Uh, volume slider, double-sized buttons. You can set a passcode to lock the settings. Clear the screen after each reading, which I have that toggled off because I, I liked having it still visible until I chose to clear it. Scroll the canvas. Scratch out, mistake, and erase. Keep a log. So see right there? And then here I can share or delete. Yes, I want to delete it, and then that clears that out. Um, and you can toggle that off if you, for privacy reasons, don't want it keeping a log. And that's all just here within the app. That's not sent anywhere. Um, device orientation looks like that. So let's go back and see what these changes make it look like. So you can see why I had it toggled off. To me, that becomes a bit visually distracting. All right, so I wanted to show, I have drag tab to resize. I finally figured out what that meant. That meant I mean I can drag. If I want to have more of a typing area, I can. And that brings up the keyboard. Um, This is my voice. So when I hit the return key, it automatically spoke. If I want to clear that out, I can do delete. Um, I can drag that back up out of the way if I don't want it visible. Um, so yeah, I could picture maybe using that. I'm going to go ahead and ta toggle that off, though, um, just because my main point in this app is the large, visually clear, non-distracting ability to write. And what I have to say about that is I, I love it. I love it. So hope this helps.